Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss one important past paper question on electric field and PET. In this question, we will talk about electric field, we will discuss Coulomb's law, we will also talk about circular motion. At the end of this lesson, we will also talk about little bit about PET. So this is a great question on all these topics. Watch the video carefully and try to improve your understanding of these topics. Let's study together, let's improve together. For question number two, part A, we need to state Coulomb's law. Imagine that we have two point charges. Let's say this charge is plus Q and we have another charge plus Q. This is also point charge. Point charge simply means that the size of the charge is very, very small as compared with the distance between charges. So we can treat these charges as point charges. And now imagine that the distance between these two charges this means the distance from center to center. This distance is R. Coulomb's law simply tells us the force between these two point charges is directly proportional to the product of these charges. We can say, let's say this is charge Q1 and this is charge Q2. So the force between these two charges in this case will be repulsive force. That force is directly proportional to the product of these two charges. And this force is inversely proportional to the square of separation between them means inversely proportional to the square of distance between centers of these charges so this is what coulomb's law tells us and this is what is coulomb's law we can also write down this one in equation form we can simply write down f is equal to constant of proportionality q1 q2 divided by r squared here k is equal equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So this is k and it is multiplied with q1, q2 divided by square of distance between the centers. So this is how Coulomb's law can be stated. Now let me show you the answer, how you can write down your answer. This is how you can write down your answer and in your answer if you have mentioned electric force between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the charges you have to mention two point charges this is very important point and inversely proportional to the square of the separation you will get two marks first one has one mark this is b mark and the second point also has one mark that is also b mark so this is how marks will be awarded and this is how you can state Coulomb's law very similar to Newton's law of gravitation so Newton's law of gravitation and Coulomb's law they're very similar in Newton's law of gravitation we talk about point masses and in Coulomb's law we simply talk about point charges everything else is the same in Coulomb's law we talk about point charges in Newton's law of gravitation we talk about point masses in Newton's law of gravitation you also need to understand means if you're talking about gravitational force we have capital G. This is universal gravitational constant and here is Coulomb's constant. So that is also the difference. So we have G M1 M2 divided by R squared. So this is Newton's law of gravitation and here we have Coulomb's law. So this equation is for Coulomb's law. You can see only differences K, G and here we have point charges and here we have point masses. For part B, it is given to us positronium is a system in which which an electron and a positron orbit with the same speed about the common center of mass as shown in figure 2.1. The radius r of the orbit of both particles is 1.59 times 10 to minus 10 meters. For part D1, we need to explain how the electric force between the electron and the positron causes the path of the moving particles to be circular. So simply we need to explain why these particles are moving in circle or simply we can say why they are doing circular motion. So this is what we need to explain. If you look at these particles and we look at the forces between them, electron is negatively charged and positron is positively charged. And the force between them, so there is a force on electron due to positron and that force is directly to the right and there is also force on positron and that force is directly to the left. Then these two forces are equal in magnitude. If we draw electron at this point, when electron is here, positron 
will be here because they have the same speed so we can draw forces again on these particles so this is the force acting on electron they will be force acting on positron in opposite direction so this is how forces will be acting we can draw this one at any point imagine that when electron is here positron will be somewhere here so they will be force on electron along this line and they will be force on positron along this line now if you look at velocity this is moving clockwise so you can see the arrow so these particles are moving in clockwise direction so if you look at this particle when it is at this point velocity of this particle is directed vertically downwards and velocity of this one will be directed vertically upwards now if you look at the angle between force and the velocity this angle is 90 degrees so simply we can say force in this case is perpendicular to velocity and force between these two particles is constant because force coulomb's force is equal to k q1 q2 divided by r square force is constant so second point we can write down force is constant force is constant mean force on each particle is constant and force is perpendicular to velocity we can also write down in this case centripetal force is provided by electric force centripetal force is provided by electrical force and electrical force is constant so it means centripetal force is also constant and these are the conditions for uniform circular motion so that's the reason these particles they will move in circle or they will do circular motion and these points only we need to write down to answer this question this question has two marks if you write down these two points you will get two marks let me show you the answer you can also consider this point for example at this point you will see the velocity will be directed this way again angle is 90 degrees at any point you can also draw at this point so this is v this is v and in this case you will have v here so these are basic conditions for uniform circular motion force has to be constant and force has to be perpendicular to velocity then body will move in a circle with constant speed and centripetal acceleration this is how you can write down your answer in your answer you need to write down electric force is perpendicular to velocity and it will cause centripetal acceleration you will get one mark and that mark is b mark and the second mark you will get if you have written force has constant magnitude you will get second b mark this is how marks will be awarded this question is very common sometimes they will only ask you about masses are you they will say one object is moving in a circle explain why this is moving in a circle so you can again write down these two points for the second part we need to show that the magnitude of electric force between electron and positron is equal equal to this so we need to calculate magnitude of force in order to calculate magnitude of force we need to use coulomb's law equation it means f is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times q1 q2 divided by r square so we need to calculate force in this case the charge on electron and charge on positron is the same charge on electron because they are particle and antiparticle particle and antiparticle they have the same amount of charge but opposite so the charge on electron is equal to the charge on positron and and charge on these two particles is equal to 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulomb so this is value of q now simply we need to plug in values in this case we have 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught epsilon naught has value 8.85 times 10 to minus 12 so this is value of epsilon then you can get this value from given data means from constants q in this case is 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 this is the amount of charge on electron and amount of charge on 
positron also is the same. We are just talking about magnitude. So we can just plug in value of magnitude. And separation between these two charges is given. Separation is 1.59. The radius of orbit of the particles is given. But you need to understand in this case, we need separation between charges. So separation. Separation between centers of these two charges is equal to 2R. So this is value of 1R, but the separation is equal to 2R. So we have to multiply by, so this is 10 to minus 10. We have to multiply by 2. And we need to take square of this. Now, if we solve this one, our final answer has to be equal to 2.28 times 10 to minus 9 newtons up to 3 SF. So this is our final answer. And this question has two marks. The first mark you will get if you have written this equation. You will get one C mark. And the second mark is answer mark. If you have got the right answer, you will get two marks. If you have written this equation, you'll get one C mark. So this is how marks will be awarded for this question. One thing you need to understand in this case, charge on these two particles is the same because they are particle and antiparticle. And the second confusing part is you need to consider separation between these two charges, not on the radius. For our third part, we need to use information in B2 to determine the period of the circular orbit of two particles. We need to determine the period these two particles they have the same period and they also have the same speed so we need to calculate time period in order to calculate time period we need to consider the circular motion mean we need to consider centripetal force in this case centripetal force is provided by electric force so you can write down first point centripetal force is provided by electric force centripetal force we need to understand is equal to mv squared pi r. In this case, we need to calculate time period so we can rearrange this one. We need to understand the speed of the particle in this case will be equal to 2 pi r divided by time period. So this is the orbital speed of any single particle. And these two particles, they have the same orbital speed. Now we can plug in value of V here. We can write down this is M over R. Then here we have this is 2 pi R divided by T. And this is square. We can simplify this. We can write down M times 4 pi square times R square divided by we have this is T square. And this is equal to centripetal force. We have R here, so we can cancel this R with this. We need to calculate time period in this case, so it means T will be equal to 4 pi square times R times M, so we have M, and this will be divided by F. Now, if we take square root of this one, we can calculate value of M. Now, simply we need to plug in these values, and we can calculate time period. 4 pi, so we have 4 pi square, and the radius of this R bit is 1.59 times 10 to minus 10, and mass of the particle, these are particle and anti particle particle and antiparticle they have the same mass but opposite charge so it means we need to consider mass of electron and mass of electron is equal to 9.11 times 10 to negative 31 kgs. So the mass is 9.11 times 10 to negative 31 kgs. And we need to divide this one by Coulomb's force, meaning the electric force between these two charges. Electric force we have already calculated. That was equal to 2.28 times 10 to minus 9. And the power of this one is 1 by 2. If we simply put these numbers into to calculator we can calculate value of time period in this case time period will be equal to 1.58 times 10 to minus 15 
second very very fast it means electron and positron they will be moving very very fast you can see time period is very very short so it means they're moving at very high speeds so this is how we can calculate time period so our final answer for this question is 1.58 times 10 to minus 15 seconds our answer is up to 3 sf because here we have 3 sf we have 3 sf we have 3 sf so in our final answer we need to consider least number of sf our data has least number of sf3 so our final answer is also up to 3 sf so this is our final answer this question has three marks the first mark you will get if you have written this formula if you have written this formula you will get one c mark so you will get one c mark and the second mark you will get if you have plug in values of time period means values for these quantities for time period you get one c mark and you will get another mark this is answer mark if you got the right answer if you got right answer you will get three marks for part C, it is given to us positronium is highly unstable. After a very short period of time, it becomes gamma radiation. For part C1, we need to describe how gamma radiation is formed from the two particles in positronium. First thing we need to understand, we are talking about electron and positron. So simply I can write out here. So this is electron and this one is positron. Electron is particle and positron is antiparticle. So this one is antiparticle of electron. So simply we can write down this one is antiparticle. Particle we can also say this is matter and antiparticle we can also say this is antimatter. Then matter and antimatter they interact let's say we have electron then this electron it will interact with positron with positron they will annihilate and in this case mass will be converted into energy so two gamma radiation will be emitted so in this case mass will be converted into energy when mass is converted into energy this process is called annihilation mass is converted into energy this process is called annihilation means these particles they will be annihilated and the mass will be converted into energy this process is called annihilation but if energy is converted into matter that process is called creation like the creation of the universe so that is called creation if the energy is converted into mass that is creation but if mass is converted into energy that is called annihilation Annihilation. In this case, annihilation will take place and electron and positron, they will disappear, they will be converted into energy. Simply we can say, in this case, electron and positron, if they interact, they meet, the mass will be converted into energy. Particles will disappear and energy will appear. This is what we need to write down for the answer of this question. So let me show you how you can write out the answer. In your answer, you can mention these points. You can say positron is antiparticle of electrons as positron interacts with electron. Pair annihilation occurs and the mass is converted into photon energy, mean in form of gamma radiations. In this case, two gamma radiations will be emitted to conserve momentum. For the second part, we need to state one medical application of the process described in C1. And this process is used in PET, positron emission tomography, PET. So this is one application of this process. This question, the first question has three marks. So you will get one mark for writing this point and for the second one, you will get this second point and for the last one you will get the third mark and for this question only one mark you will get one p mark if you have written p e t so this is how marks will be awarded for this question i hope this question is clear to you we have solved from question 2 to question 10 means we have discussed nine questions from may june 2022 paper 4 to only one question is left and that question will be coming very soon for rest of the question from question 
question number two to question number ten, you can find solution of all the questions on my channel. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask anytime. And also, you can ask any questions about any past paper. That's all for today's video. See you in next video.